Hey guys, it's me, Kevin Nealon, and you might know me from uh, Happy Gilmore or Weeds or Saturday Night Live or from my hiking show, Hiking with Kevin on YouTube. Um, and I, I'm having a great time on this podcast. I don't know if you ever watch it, but Joe is amazing. And um, I, I don't know who taught him, but maybe it was me. I teach a lot of people. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I, I hope you continue to watch the boys podcast. Hello, let us begin by introducing ourselves. I am Hans. I'm Dan Franz. And, and we, we want, want to pump you up. <laughs> a little bit about ourselves. We come to the States from a small village of weightlifters in Austria. Yeah. Harness in the good energy, block out the bad. Harness, energy, block, bad. Mm -hmm. Feel the flow happy. Feel it. It's circular. It's like a carousel. You pay the quarter, you get on the horse. It goes up and down and around, uh -huh. circular, circle with the music, the flow. Thank you for being so understanding your wickedness. You're the man. You've always been the man. I've always said that. Oh, oh, oh. Are there booms on my head? Yeah, big ones. Just back me up, all right? Oh, you want me to be the goon, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, I know what to do. I'm not even allowed in Chuck E. Cheese anymore. And welcome back to another episode of Voice Podcast. My guest today is an actor, comedian, voice actor, and director. You may have seen him as multiple characters in Nine Years of Saturday Night Live, Gary Potter and Happy Gilmore, Mr. Sims in The Wedding Singer, Stanley the Gatekeeper, a.k.a. Tidhead in Lil Nicky, Doug Wilson in Weeds, Don Burns in Math the Plan, and his voice is Glenn Marn in Glenn Marn DDS, and many more. He's also the host of Hiking with Kevin, and he has a book out called I Exaggerate, My Brushes of Fame. So welcome the legendary, the legend himself, Mr. Kevin Nealon. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Joe. That was quite an introduction. You really know my stuff. Thank you. You're, you're a legend. Like, you've done so many cool cool roles. To, like, you know what I mean, Kevin? Like, wow. Yeah, I've been really lucky in that way. I've done a lot of Adam Sandler films. You know, everything, Joe, I started out wanting to do, I've, I've been doing, and I'm grateful for that. I, I, the, the, the most important thing was for me at that time was being a stand-up comedian. And then the other things kind of came secondary, like Saturday Night Live and Weeds and Mr. Cheezel and Grandma's Boy, all that stuff. You, it's like so cool. Like, in my opinion, you're a legend, Kevin, so. <laughs> well, thank you. Spread that around. I got you. <laughs> now, uh, Kevin, what have you been up to? Like, how are you doing? How's Kevin doing? Well, I'm I'm doing well. I you know I travel a lot. I do stand up comedy. I'm working on a new stand up special. Um, I'm painting all the time, and I'm working on my hikes. You know, I, I do about maybe 25 hikes a season. I'm on my fourth season, and uh, it's it's quite a process, Joe. I I kind of learned how to work a GoPro. I put it at the end of a selfie stick. Um, I have a drone. I learned how to fly the drone, and I do all this by myself. And then I come back with my footage and I edit it on Premiere Pro. And then I also cast it myself. So I'm always writing to publicists asking if I can get their client or clients to uh, do my hiking show. Well, if there's any comedians I've interviewed somehow, some way, let me know. I could help you out. I'll, I'll I appreciate put, that. I'm a good word. You know, I've had on Ben Schwartz, Tommy Chung, though, those are kind of being in the office. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Tommy Chung would ever be, uh, you know, <laughs> sober enough or, or, not stone enough to take a hike. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that'd be really cool. Because I love your show, Hiking with Kevin. It's a great show, in my opinion. You know, I'm excited to see, hopefully, you're, I think you're posting today because you post every Thursday. Yeah, so. yeah, you're right. So, excited yeah, to see. Yeah, I try to post every Thursday, Joe, but sometimes I get overwhelmed with other work and I don't get to um, <clears throat> edit the thing. So it's usually a day or two after. But typically, yeah, it is on Thursday, mostly. Hey, that's it. hey if you ever need help, too, I think I love helping people. Do you? Oh, cool. Yeah. So, if you're keep that in mind. Thanks, Joe. Of course. Now, uh, Kevin, what made you want to become an actor and a comedian? Who would you say is your biggest inspiration for acting and comedy? Well, it's funny because growing up, I used to love watching comedians on TV. I wouldn't miss one of them. I, I just love the whole craftsmanship of coming out there and telling jokes. And I thought, wow, these guys come out, they work for only five minutes on a TV show, and then they're done for the day. <laughs> um, I didn't realize the traveling that went into it and all the writing and the um, repetition of doing it and a lot of clubs and, you know, the, con the continuous working on your act to make it better. But I did love stand-up comedy and I love telling jokes at parties. I would memorize the, the jokes in the back of a, a magazine called The Parade magazine. It was part of the newspaper. It came in the newspaper. And at the back, they always had... Uh, a very um, popular comedian at the time, 
they uh, listed about 10 of their jokes. So I would kind of memorize those jokes, personalize them. And then at the next party, I'd kind of go up to somebody and say, hey, you know, you heard about this guy who stole a, a fire truck downtown today? And they go, no, really? I go, yeah, yeah. They said, what happened? Did I get him? I said, yeah, he was arrested two hours later by some guy who stole a cop car. You know, so I like those kinds of, uh, I would memorize those kinds of things. And, um, you know, acting just came kind of secondary. Um, I kind of fell into that. Saturday Night Live came along and then Weeds and all those Sandler films. So I've been very lucky in that way. And I've really been enjoying the ride. And you, did you like watch TV growing up, like a particular comedian or actor? Oh, yeah. I had, uh, I was fans of um, a lot of different comedians. I liked a guy called Stanley Myron Handelman. Okay. Uh, he was very good. I liked him. I liked uh, Steve Martin, Albert Brooks. Um, I, I loved, um, I loved Andy Kaufman, Jonathan Winters. You know, I liked the ones that were very eclectic and weren't just doing the same kind of a standard routine of jokes and punchlines. Andy Kaufman was very uh, unique and he was more of a performance artist, although he called himself a song and dance man. <laughs> but, um, but I did like his style and it was, it always kind of kept you guessing. So it was Steve Martin, isn't he like the wild crazy guy, I think they call him? Well, he was going through a phase with a stand-up. Yeah, he came up with this wild and crazy guy uh, where he'd come out on uh, Saturday Night Live or The Tonight Show and just kind of a white suit and just be really kind of a pseudo suave, you know, debonair guy. But he, but everybody knew he wasn't. You know? So, um, yeah, he had a lot of characters and a lot of fun bits. But now I think he's more, he stopped doing stand-up and he got into movies like The Jerk and... Um, in the man with two brains and a whole bunch of movies and now he's doing that show um i'm not sure what network's on but it's called murders in the building i think it's called yeah with uh oh my god one of my blank my guy's name yeah martin, martin, short. Short. martin short. short yeah right is it like on hulu i think mark maybe hulu yeah it's somewhere on uh i don't know whether it's on apple tv or h or netflix i'm not sure wow that's really cool so if you actually went so if you went hiking with steve martin would that be one of your people you'd want to get on your show uh yeah that would be great um i think i might have asked him but he um he, he um he was so busy and then um bill murray would be a great one to hike with i'd like to hike with him um I, you know i'm just finishing up watching breaking bad i was kind of late to the party and uh, i love all the characters on there so if you got brian cranston i think that's the main guy yeah aaron paul brian cranston um jonathan banks i mean there, there's so many great they're all great actors on there if i could get one of them i'd be happy <clears throat> well if i somehow get them i'll put in a good word for you I, I wish you would pick up your phone and call them for me once in a while they, but you're very like gifted and talented little kevin like everything you do like you're hosting your show like it's really cool too like it's a very unique and great idea you know hiking like, yeah, i mean hiking and asking questions like wow you know I mean? yeah it's a very kind of um homegrown show it's not really um it's not really fancy and shiny and you know high production and i think people like that because they kind of relate to it oh this looks like something i would shoot you know but it has gotten a lot more sophisticated since i started originally i just started with a selfie stick with a cell phone camera at the end and this was this was maybe eight years ago when the cell phones didn't have the stabilizers in them and so it's very bouncy and then the wind would come by and you could hear the wind so but I had some good hikes back then with uh, Adam Sandler and Conan O'Brien, to name a few. That's really cool. Those are two big names too. Adam, of course, you know, and Conan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conan and I always have a good time when we're uh, interviewing because we've known each other for so long. You know, he used to be a writer on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, back in the. Back yeah, back in the 1900s. <laughs> and he, um, he and I are always kind of like kibitzing each other, teasing each other on uh, mm -hmm. whether it was on a show or on his podcast. People seem to like the last podcast we did together because we were just attacking each other in a funny way. Uh, you should check that out sometime. So you guys are like a dynamic duo. You know, yeah, Conan it's called Conan, uh, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. And I think that's what it's called. Mm, I think so. But anyway, yeah, it's it's like it's it's the pinnacle of all of our mutual interview shows where we just kind of know each other's pacing so well, we know each other's personality, we just know how to dig in there and, in a funny way. 
and uh, and it's I think it's really entertaining. People are always coming up to me saying, "Oh man, that last podcast with Conan, whoo, that's funny." Okay, I don't know. I'm watching now, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't even think you watch it. You got to listen to it. I think. Okay. Now, what is your favorite acting role you portrayed? Like, if you have all your acting roles, what's your favorite? Well, the the time, the, the best time I ever had was uh, in the movie Roxanne. It was really my first movie I did, and I played drunk number two. And this was a spoof on Cyrano de Bergerac. It was kind of a, you know, a play on that where Steve Martin played Cyrano de Bergerac with a very long nose. And we, the reason I loved it is because first I, I got to work with my my uh, my mentor and, and kind of idol with Steve Martin, and we get to hang out in British Columbia, a little ski town called Nelson, British Columbia, for three weeks. And I just had a very small part where I would get into a duel with Steve Martin. I had a ski pole, and he had a tennis racket. And like Cyrano de Bergerac, he got into a duel, but they both had swords. But this time I had a ski pole, and he had a tennis racket. So I tried to get the role of junk number one, but that was already, already taken. So. Um, so yeah, I love I, that was probably the most fun I had. Uh, character wise, I like playing um, I like playing uh, the role Gary Gary and um, Happy Gilmore, and um, Tidhead and Little Nicky was fun because I got to hang out with Rodney Dangerfield for a while, and um, yeah, so um, th those are probably the ones. And Weeds, I mean, there, I've done so many fun roles, and you know, I really it's hard to actually pick one thing, you know, Joe. It's like a favorite kid, you know, almost like that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. actually right. That's right. Wow. Now, uh, can you walk me through the audition process? How do you get the roles of Gary Tidhead and Don Burns? Like, how did you get those roles? Well, a good question. Um, for any of the Sandler films, I, I don't have to audition. He'll just call me and say, hey, Neilan, you, you want to do this role? I think it's really funny. You know, you get water thrown on you and, you know, you get dragged behind a car. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, so I said, uh, sure, whatever, because it's just fun working with him and all our buddies, you know. Um, but as far as a regular audition, before the pandemic, you um, would go into the office. Now it's just all on Zoom in your house. You send in a tape and uh, they they make a decision from that. But uh, before that, yeah, you, you get the uh, they would email you the sides, they call it. It's the part of the script that you're going to be reading the lines. And you have an appointment, you go in and you sit in the waiting room with the other actors that are also auditioning for that part. And you look around, and you think, oh, man, I'm never going to get this. And you go in and there's a couple of, uh, you know, a little small talk and cordial hellos. And then they go, OK, you want to read this? I say, sure. Well, I don't want to, but I'm going to. And, um, you know, you go through the, uh, the different scenes that they want you to read. Then they say, thank you. You say thank you and you either hear back or you don't. Mostly you don't hear back. Wow. Do you, do you have like a favorite quote by one of your characters in like the Sandler films? There's like a favorite quote. One of the favorite what? Quote. Like they oh, say. Quote, quote. Quote. Well, I think most people remember the Happy Gilmore thing. And I don't remember the exact lines, but it's harness the good, block the bad, send the ball home, happy. Bags are packed circular it's like a carousel you put the quarter in it goes around and around and around psycho you know that kind of thing that was kind of like people seem to like that the most and that was fun to do that was all improvised that that's a gift right there kevin ah, yeah. to see this. Wow. now is there a certain type of role you would love to portray like a western or a sci-fi like a certain type of role you love to do well it'd be fun to be in a western that's for sure but um, I would like to do a dramatic role. I'd like to be in, um, you know, a movie that was kind of intense. Okay. Or, um, playing, it's like I told you Albert Brooks was one of my favorite comics uh, earlier. And and if you watch that movie Drive, he plays a heavy in there. He plays this um, kind of a mob, mob boss guy. And he's very convincing. So I think a lot of comedians are good dramatic actors. So I think I would love to to be in a, a, a dramatic film, whether it was a Western or, you know, a mystery or, or whatever. Ooh, I could see you like being a Western movie, Kevin. I don't know why. I could just see <laughs> What Do you see me as the good guy or the bad guy? Ooh, okay. I could see like like you like, were like a good guy, but then you turn to be the bad guy, if that makes sense. I like right? that, man. I like that. That's a good turn. I could see that. Because I also, if I told you Kevin is a hobby, I love to write scripts. So that's why, oh. that's why I'm going to become a screenwriter. So. I bet you'll be good. I bet you are good. 
So I could maybe write you as a guy that turns that was good that turns evil. Maybe there's like a cowboy. I, I'd like to be a guy who uh, is bad, evil, turns good, then goes back to evil, then goes back to good, and you know maybe four or five times make those changes. I could that'd be cool. I could maybe work on that type of script. Let you know, like oh, okay, right. nice. <laughs> now. Over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with co-stars and directors that you worked with? Do you still keep in touch? Oh, I do. I do. You know, for the Sailor films, I see a lot of those guys around, like Spade and um, Colvert and Sailor, of course, and, and um, you know, a lot of those guys. And then, um, you know, as far as um, TV shows, I see uh, Dana Carvey all the time. I see John Lovitz. I see Spade. Um, but I don't see the women too much on that show. But uh, but it is interesting how you kind of keep in touch. You know, when the hosts were on Saturday Night Live, they were so mostly so terrified that they glommed on to you like for their life. And it was kind of like going through a battle for them. So it could have been 30 years ago, 35 years ago that they were hosting. And when they see we see each other on the street, it's like, how are you? How have you been? You know, we really remember each other. And they it's kind of a big point in their life doing that show. <clears throat> Now, I have a question before I ask my next one. Do you, do you remember the actor, voice actor, Peter Oldring? Do you know who that is? He was in Peter, Peter Oldring, yeah. He actually said during my interview with him, like, can I show you like a little snippet? It's like a 30 second snippet. He actually mentions you in the interview. Can I show you? Look, look, yeah. Look. Okay. Because he, because I, I was talking, we was talking about people he like really liked working with, and he really, like, you understand, Kevin, like, you're his favorite person he liked working with, by the way. Oh, that's nice. So give me one second. I'm yeah, sorry. we were on a show called DDS, uh, Glenn Martin DDS together. Yeah. That's where I met him. And you were the man himself, Glenn Martin. I was Glenn Martin, yeah. Okay, got you. Give me one second. Yeah, because he was he was really fun to talk to too. Like like he kept much like he was like saying like how awesome you are. Like you're a legend. Like I'll, I'll show you. Let me see. Oh yeah, I want to hear something nice about myself. <laughs> okay. There you go. Oh, let me turn on the brightness because it might. I don't want to blind you. <laughs> That'd be bad. Okay, uh, here you go. Come true, Kevin, Kevin Nealon, who is truly one of the funniest people that you can meet. He just he's just has such a first of all, he has such a, a kind demeanor about him. Like there's just a kindness that um that is him. He's so easygoing and he's just effortlessly funny. Always, always. He just sort yeah. of has such a playful, effortless comedic quality about him. So that was a show that I, I there you go. There you go. That was cool, Joe. Would you play that again for me? Sure. <laughs> no, it's okay. Good. I was kidding. Okay. Yeah. I you know, to be honest with you, I don't remember him. Where do he, I know him from? <laughs> he was uh Connor and that Glenn Martin. He was your son in the show. That's right, he was. He's such a great and the same goes back to him too. He's such a nice guy. Well, he's from Canada, so how can you not be nice? And uh, and talented too. I mean, there's so many voices. You know, thanks for playing. I got to call him. I got to say hi to him. Hey, if you need his number, I'm for actually have his number. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have his number. So um, hey. if it hasn't changed, but if it has changed, I'll call you. <laughs> no, Kevin, who would you say is the coolest person that you have worked with in your whole career? Who's the coolest? The coolest. Yes. Um, Wow. Um, I'm kind of going through. I would probably, but that's a tough question. I, I'm going through my whole film roles and TV roles. Um, well, you know, I did work with a lot of hosts on SNL, so we'd have to include them. Um, I would probably say, um, if you want to give me a top three, if that helps. If you want to give me three people. Yeah, I think maybe if they're mostly comedians. Bill Murray, Chevy Chase was fun. Because I always loved Chevy Chase, the way he did Weekend Update. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, Madonna was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. How, how is Matt Le LeBlanc? LeBlanc? You know, from Matt LeBlanc, yeah, he's great. Yeah, I used to, like a lot of people, I watched him on Friends as Joey. Yes. And I, he was actually one of my favorites. I loved how 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 dumb he was, and you know. And I told him uh, on the show we were doing Man with a Plan. That's where I worked with him for four years, and it was exciting for me because here I am getting to work with Joey. And of course, he's older now, and uh, you know he's put on a little weight, but still looks great. 
and um, he he was uh, it was funny because I would uh, always try to get him to do that line. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? And he would never do it. And I kept asking him. He goes, "Okay, you do uh, you do. I want to pump you up by Hans and Franz, and I'll do that." And I said, "Okay." So I said, "We want to pump you up." He goes, "How you doing?" And that was uh, the last of it right there. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Like, oh, I work with so many cool people. Like, kind of like, oh my god. You know what I mean, I have been working with a lot of people. Uh, of course, you know, when I'm done with this, I'll re I'll remember some really cool people I worked with. Um, but I have worked with a, you know, I've worked with a lot of these actors too that are no longer with us. Like from, you know, the early from the '60s and '70s. Like uh, Charlton Heston was on SNL. Um, Robert Mitchum. Mm -hmm. So now um, there's been others too. You know, Dolly Parton was probably the most loved, beloved host we had. The whole crew fell in love with her. The cast was in love with her. Everybody loved her. She's just so warm and friendly and pretty much like we see on stage all the time. That's cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. Fun. Now, what director t taught you the most? Is there one you would love to work with that you haven't worked with yet, but you would love to? Uh, well, of course, I'd love to work with all the big directors, David or Russell, um, you know, Spielberg, of course. And, um, but the ones that I worked with, um, there was some on Weeds that I really liked a lot, but that was more of a TV thing. Um, I haven't done a lot of films. Or if I have, they're all mostly Sandler films. Um, but I, director wise, it's tough to say, Joe. It's tough mm -hmm. to say because you know we've had so many different directors. Uh, you know, in Weeds, they would um, mm -hmm. kind of turn over very quickly because like different episodes, different direct direction. Yeah, yeah. There's one guy who uh, would direct um, New York Broadway plays that um, was a really cool guy, and he knew a lot about directing. And I'm trying to think of his name. It was uh, Steve. Uh, let me think about this. And when I say think about this, I'm looking at my cell phone. <laughs> looking at my cell phone, uh, Rolodex here. But I, I don't. I don't really see him anywhere. But I think it was Steve. Something. I. I could be wrong. But anyway, he was really good. He was good. And also, oh well, I'll tell you. Also, um, when I worked on um, Man with a Plan. Ooh. Here was the director. Um, God, the big director. I'm losing my mind, Joe. I can't remember his name. And he is, um, hang on a second. Let me just, this is a good practice thing for me to work on my memory here. His name was Jim. Uh, Jim. Uh, Jim something. Hang on, let me see if he's in my book. <laughs> I don't seem to have any of these really good people in my book. Um, oh, James, James, um, hang on a second. I'm going to tell you exactly what his name is because I don't want to, I don't want to leave this. But in the meantime, um, some directors, some directors really make you um, feel comfortable on the set. And I guess, do you want his name? I found his name. Oh, it's James something. James Burroughs? Yes, James Burroughs, Jim Burroughs. Yeah, he's probably one of the best directors I've worked with. Uh, it's TV though, it's TV, because he's a man of few words. He's been doing it so long, and he's been so successful at it. In fact, when we did Man With A Plan, he didn't direct all of them, but he did a few of them. He did the pilot. He would have a director's chair that had a lot of padding on it. It was almost like an easy chair, if a director's chair could be an easy chair. And he would have like four newspapers delivered to him that morning, a cup of coffee. So he was really uh, well treated. Wow. See, that would, that would drove me crazy. That's why I looked up really quickly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. I'm glad you did. I wanted to say James Cromwell, but that wasn't it. It was Jim isn't, Burroughs. Isn't James Cromwell an actor? I mean? Yeah, he is an actor. That's, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Now, if you didn't go into acting and comedy, what do you think your career would have been? And what other interesting hobbies? I think it would, you know, I think it would either be art or it'd be uh, marketing, like to write copyright, because that's kind of creative <clears throat> line of work, right? Yeah. And you're coming up with clever ads and maybe funny uh, catchphrases or or whatever. 
So that might have been fun for me. I did go to school for business. <clears throat> I have a marketing degree in uh, business. I mean, not a marketing degree. I have a, a, a Bachelor of Science degree in marketing. Wow. Do, you, do you have any hobbies? I'm assuming car caricature artist. Well, Joe, I've got so many hobbies and interests. I really, it's hard for me to not, to be bored. When I was a kid, remember when we were kids, you say, I'm bored, what can I do, mom? I mean, I don't think I've said that in probably, I don't know, 50, 55 years or whatever. But um, but yeah, so my hobbies are music. I like to play the guitar and the banjo. And now I'm learning how to play the piano. I take um, Spanish twice a week on Zoom from a woman in Mexico City. I've been doing that for the last year and a half. And um, I like to draw. Yeah, I like to draw. Uh, I like to read, um, and I like to hike, and I like to ski, and ping pong. My son and I, he's just turned 16, and we, uh, we play some hellacious ping pong in our garage. It's pretty amazing. There used, there used to be a time where uh, he couldn't beat me, and I would let him win, uh, but I should have anticipated that eventually he would start beating me hands down, so I should have beat him as much as I could back then when I could. But he's become pretty ferocious. He's really, really good. That's I'm sorry. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what now? Speaking of on the hobbies, like uh, hiking, what inspired hiking with Kevin in your book? I exaggerate. Like, what inspires both of those? Well, the hiking show. I I got together with a buddy of mine. He's an actor, Matthew Modine. He's on Stranger Things now, but I've known him for quite a while because he also hosted SNL when I was there. So we kind of became friends from that. And then he was on Weeds for a couple of, uh, you know, he's a recurring uh, actor on Weeds. And I called him one day. I said, Matt, you want to go for a hike? Because I hadn't seen him in a while. He goes, sure. So we're hiking in this canyon, pretty steep trail. And about a half hour in, we're still talking, trying to catch up. And I'm, we're both out of breath. I'm like, Matt, so when you came to, when you came to Hollywood, when you, did you find an apartment? And he would answer me back like that. And I thought this would be a funny thing to post on Twitter at the time, like a two-minute interstitial and just, you know, talk, you know, just posted like a, an interview and it was really funny. And then on the way down the canyon on the other side, I asked him a more serious question on camera. I said, Matt, did you ever turn down anything you regretted after um, Full Metal Jacket? Because that was a movie he did back in the early 80s, I think, which uh, to much acclaim. And he rolled his eyes. He goes, oh, man, I turned down so many movies I, I should have done. Like I said, like what? He goes, well, I turned down the Michael J. Fox role in Back to the Future. I turned down the Charlie Sheen role in Wolf in Wall Street. I turned down the Tom Hanks role in, in um, Big, and uh, and it just went on. I thought I said, "You idiot!" And we both laughed. So I posted that too. So that's how that came about. The book, I exaggerate. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of these caricature artworks that you could kind of see behind me. And I've always loved doing that. Since I was a kid, I loved kind of drawing um, people, but you know, it was never kind of focused and I never committed to it really in a sense. It was just kind of fun little quick sketches. And then about, and even on Saturday Night Live, when, when I wasn't in a sketch at the table read, I would sketch pictures in the margin of the script that we were reading. I would sketch maybe the person across from me, like Chris Farley or whomever it was. But then about a year or two before the pandemic, I really started to follow these Instagram artists that were really good. And I thought, man, I got to get into that again. So I started drawing and I started um, um, exchanging ideas and, and questions with some of these established artists. And I just started going at it, just going at it. And soon um, I had enough to, ha to do a book. And I was hiking with another friend of mine and he's... Um, you know, he's a networker guy, you know, he's, uh, he knows everybody. And I said, I said, Jake, do you ever write a book? He goes, oh yeah, I wrote like 15 books, but they were, co you know, I had a ghostwriter that wrote them. He's from New York. And uh, he goes, what, what about you, Kev? You ever write a book? I said, well, I'm thinking about it. I wrote one about 15 years ago, but you know, it never really went anywhere. He says, you got ideas for a book? I said, yeah, I have one. And he picked up the phone right away. He goes, I'm going to, I'm going to call my agent, Jan. She's, uh, she she publishes all the big books, you know, or she's an agent to all the big authors, you know, like uh, Oprah Winfrey and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And so she, he got her on the phone right away and I talked to her and I told her I have an idea. She said, call me when you get home. And I did and told her about this idea where there was caricatures. And on the opposite page, there was a little anecdote about my experience with this person. And um, sure enough, she signed me up and we got a publisher and and uh, bingo, there's the book. 
Wow, that is, that's awesome. That is really cool. Now, for your for Matthew Modine, if I remember correctly, wasn't he in the movie Vision Quest? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he's been in a lot of films. He's always working. See, I'm a see. I love like Blair and I. I love a lot of older stuff like seventies, eighties. Like my music, my movie taste. Like you should see like my taste. You're like, damn, Joe. Like what the heck? I bet. Yeah, I bet. Oh, wow. Now, uh, <clears throat> favorite band or artist and type of music? What do you say? Like. <sighs> Well, my first concert, I, and I like to ask people this, my first concert was um, James Taylor. Ooh. So I've always been a James Taylor fan because I played the guitar and I've always wanted to learn how to pick like him and play like him. But, um, but band-wise, of course, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. And it was cool because when I was in Saturday Night Live, Mick Jagger came on and Keith Richards came on another time and James Taylor was played several times when I was there. So that was, that was awesome for me to have that experience. Um, but yeah, I think those would be the bands, but I like a lot of bands now. And I'm like you, I like the bands from the seventies, yeah. mostly you know, like queen, the Eagles, Beatles, you know, those kinds of bands. So See, I queen. do like country too, Joe. I like, um, I like Rascal Flats and, uh, Lady A. Those are more crossover country. And, um, Brad Paisley is a friend of mine. I like his music. Um, Clint Black. I mean, there's a lot of good people out there. Carrie Underwood. Yeah, because Queen's actually my favorite band of all time. Is it really? Yeah, yeah they're great, man. They're amazing. And you have Brian May over there, too, I think I saw. Oh, well, yeah? Freddie Mercury? A, a character chart? Do you think you have like a picture of Brian that way on your right? Brian May. Yeah, Brian May. And I do have uh, I have a uh, Freddie uh, Mercury somewhere. It's in my book. And then you have Rami Malek, who played Freddie in the movie. behind you. Wow, you're right. You're right, man. Good observation there, Joe. Yeah. Good observation. There's Robert Plant right down here. Oops, wrong side, backwards here. Where's, oh, where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's right behind me. Right there. Where is he? Come on. There he is, Robert Plant. That's cool. There's Eddie Vedder. That's There's, actually I have two of uh, Rami Malek. That was the first one I did right there in the bottom. And then the other one, of course, when I got a little bit better was uh, there he is. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, <laughs> now, a favorite movies and TV shows of all time. Oh, favorite movies of all time. Well, there's a comedy that I love, and I keep referring it to people because I was always a, uh, a Charles Grodin fan. Ooh. And it was a movie called The Heartbreak Kid. And it was, I just love that movie. And I, I watch it every once in a while still. There was a remake of it, but that I'm not, I wasn't, I was very... I was very insulted. Yeah, they were making a remake of my favorite movie, and of course it wasn't as good. Um, I, I remember liking the Rocky movies. I always loved the Rocky. I love the underdog movies. Yeah, you know, like It's a Wonderful Life or you know Rocky. But now my you know when my son is growing up, he's still growing up. He likes certain movies. He likes all the Marvel movies. So I've been getting into those like Endgame and and Batman, all the Batman movies, and. Um, mm, and my wife loves the sound of music. That's been playing in our house probably a thousand times since my son was born. <laughs> um, but um, you know what movie I liked a lot was called Prestige. Ooh, okay. Christian Sounds Bale. Okay. Yeah, Christian Bale. And um, uh, I told you my memory's going bad. Hughes, um, the guy, um, the guy, the wolf, wolf guy with the long fingers, the long nails. See, Hugh Jackman. Just... Hugh Jackman. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back, Joe. I'm getting it back. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many movies. Again, when I um, when I leave this Skype interview, I'll think, oh, I should have told Joe I like this movie and that movie. Um, but there, there, you know what it's like. There's so many movies out there. Yeah. How about TV show wise now? Like you said, movies now. TV show well, I got to tell you something. That's that. I'm glad you brought that up because. As you know, there's so many things out there. When I talk to people, I when they recommend a movie, I write it down on my cell phone. Um, there's some TV shows that may be my favorite that I haven't seen yet. And I'm late to the party a lot on some of these shows. I've watched a good deal of Sopranos. Uh, I never saw The Wire. I keep hearing how great that is. So I started that not too long ago. But the big show, that I am just riveted to with my son. We watch it from the beginning. We kind of watch an episode or two every day. 
is Breaking Bad. I mean, mm. we are just like on the edge of our seats. Okay. okay. Wow. This, this is a lot of people. What do you like? My favorite movie of all time is Back to the Future. Back to the Future. And what about TV show? TV show wise, there's so many good shows. Like I like a lot. Like I like off to a show, but it was like it's like a show. Impractical Jokers. I really like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, did you see? Uh, speaking of movies, did you see? Uh, that was a Korean movie. It won an Oscar. Oh, what the? Are you talking about? It was really powerful. Parasite. Parasite. Oh. Parasite. Parasite. Yeah. Parasite was great, and also. Um, I also like that TV um, show. I think it was on HB or something. It's um, <laughs> Squid, Squid Game. Oh, Squid Game. Yeah, the, the, it's on Netflix. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that I enjoyed. And but again, I got to that late too. I mean, I think it was about a year after it went off. Maybe I started watching it, or a year after the first season. I actually interviewed the guy that does the voice of the main bad guy. Like he does the voice of the bad guy. Oh, really? Yes. Cool, man. Because he's also in Mortal Kombat, if you're familiar with those games at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my son plays those. So that's some little trivia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, uh, favorite sports and favorite teams? Do you like sports at all? Well, I used to play a lot of sports in college. Okay. Not so much in high school because we were always moving around. And I was 5'8 when I graduated high school, and now I'm 6'4". But as far as my favorite sports at, at my teams... I live in Los Angeles, so I, you know I go with the Lakers, but I'm not really a diehard fan of anybody. And you know, I I know um, when I know a quarterback on a football team, I become fans of theirs. Mm. But it's not like I I really am a, a diehard fan of any team. But I do like watching like the Super Bowl coming up. I'm excited about that, and the playoffs I like for the NFC. And uh, same with basketball. I like it when it gets down to the end. And then I start, I start watching. It's like a movie, too. I don't go for the beginning. I go in the last 10 minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, who's winning the Super Bowl, then? Who's, who you who's going to win? Well, you know, Mahomes yeah. is tough to, to, uh, to get around. So I think that's where my money is. So Chiefs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Chiefs. Okay. Now, uh, just, Joe, I was just hearing, I don't know what the exact figure is, but do you know how much money is gambled on the Super Bowl. I think um, it's something like I'm guess I think it was a, it is definitely in the billions, but I wasn't sure if it was 14 billion or 24 billion. Billion? Billions. Like, that's a lot of money right there. Oh my god, I have that much money. <laughs> god, if I had that much money, I got a really nice sound system in my house. <laughs> That'd be a freaking fortune like all the money you get like billions. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Um, What's another good show? Your wife was in it, Parks and Recreation. Oh, Parks and Rec, yeah, yep. She was a recurring character in that in that one. Um, she loved that. Yeah, Parks and Rec, I like a lot, and The Office is fun. Um, you know, one of my favorite shows was Cheers. <gasps> yep, that's where I met Jim Burroughs because I auditioned for that role of Ted Danson, the bartender. And I came really close to getting it. I had like five callbacks, you know, where they keep asking you to come back and read again and read. And when I left, I heard uh, from the producers, they were talking to each other. They said, well, we're not getting any closer than this. And I left thinking, wow, I got this gig. And then the two weeks goes by and they call and they say, you know what? We're actually going to look at some older actors for the part. Because I was like 25 at the time. Uh -huh. What is your favorite food? What's your favorite food? Well, I'm a pescatarian, so I love, you know, a good salmon. Uh, but in general, I love Italian food. Mm. I love Italian food. I mean, I, I'm really happy when I go into a very old Italian restaurant and there's a lot of that, you know, stuff hanging off the ceiling and uh, the waiters barely speak English. I like that. When I think of the words Italian restaurant, I think of the Billy Joel song, Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. That's a good yeah. song. That's that is a song. great song. Yeah, I like Billy Joel. He'd be a fun guy to go hiking with. Oh my God, he's a legend. He yeah. sings so many great songs. Like, I, there's too many to name you. I mean, like, <laughs> I know, man. I know. It's like, wow. Now, <clears throat> do you have any projects in the works, Kevin? Anything in the works? 
Well, I'm always writing. I always have ideas for um, TV shows. In fact, I just wrote a pilot based on my hiking show, but it's not an interview. It's just the job that I do. And I live with my new wife and my older son, who may or may not have had a relationship with my wife before I met her. <laughs> so, um, so that's, you know, we're pitching that around and that came out really well. And um, I'm working on a new special, stand-up special. So I'm touring a lot and working on material for that. And also um, a one-man show based on my paintings, where I would tell the story about my my path in life, and then these would be incorporated. Kind of like, a, you know that exhibit they have, um, the immersion thing with Van Gogh immersion? It mm -hmm. plays in a lot of big cities, and you try to walk into this building, there's paintings everywhere. But mine would be in a theater, of course, with the paintings um, shown behind me on the wall. And there's a there's an app now where you can make the paintings talk or a picture talk, you know, you can move the mouth. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about doing that and maybe having conversations with each painting, whether I knew the person or not. Like if it was Freddie Mercury, I would say, what what would I say to him if I if he were alive now? You know, or, and then we'd have a conversation. Back and forth. That's really cool. That's yeah. smart. Wow. Any cool Adam Sandler stories like people don't know about, like any stories with you and Mr. Sandler? Adam? Well, there's a few. When we did Happy Gilmore, uh, there was a day where we weren't filming, so we went out golfing. Uh, me, I think it was me and uh, Alan Covert and Sandler. And none of us are really great golfers, but I remember Sandler was up about maybe 150 yards on the right side of the fairway. He was walking up to get his ball. And I hit my ball and I saw it going right for Sandler. And I said, Sandler, four, four. And he saw the ball coming at him and he tried to outrun it. He tried to outrun the ball and it smacked him right in the back. And we couldn't stop laughing for like a half hour. He had a big red welt on his back. <laughs> um, but when I first met Sandler, he was uh, doing stand-up at the, um, at the um, comic strip live in New York City. And I went over there to kind of check it out and maybe do a spot, but he was on and there was maybe 10 people in the audience and he was very low key doing his act and he wasn't getting a big response. But when he got off, I introduced myself and he knew me from Saturday Night Live and he was really excited to meet me. And we walked from that club to another club and we just chatted about stand up and stuff and SNL. And he said when he went back to his uh, NYU dorm and told people, it was like nobody could believe it that he met me. That's cool. Yeah, right. That, that is epic. Wow. That's yeah, that, was fun. that was fun. Now, what advice would you give younger people who also want to become an actor and comedian? What is your advice, would you say? Well, for stand up comedy, you really have to be original these days because when I started, it wasn't, the field wasn't that crowded as it is now. I mean, I think it's even a, it's a, it's even a career that I think that they talk about in career day in, in schools and high schools and things, you know? And uh, so you really have to be unique, original, and you have to be willing to pretty much dedicate your life to, because it's also, um, you know, it's so involved that you have to really get up on stage, you gotta write, and you really have to be hungry for it. You have to be really ambitious. Otherwise, it's, it's not really a, a lifestyle you would want in the beginning, at least, of your career. Okay. Uh, and, and for acting, I would I would say, you know, make take a lot of acting courses. There's plenty out there. Find out what the good ones are and and then learn how to act and learn how to read scripts and maybe even go in on cold readings. You know, when you they don't even let you know in advance what the, the script is. And, you know, as far as the stand up, too, I, I would think also to join an improv group for both of those things. Join an improv group so you can learn how to think on your feet and kind of roll with the punches. Right. I like that. I always like to have, like stay humble. Remember where you came from. Stay humble. Yeah, I like that. And now, uh, would you be willing to come back on for a part two eventually in the future, sometime whenever you're, you're available, for answering some fan submitted questions? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had a great time with you. You're really good at this. Thank you, Kevin. You're you're an awesome host of your show. So you actually inspired me too with your hiking. Oh, really? oh cool, man. That's awesome. cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, before I ask you my last question, do you have any questions? Kevin, any How did you get so good at this? <laughs> well, 
if you're curious, I've been doing this since April 29th of 2020. I've been doing these interviews. Wow, good. No wonder then. You, you know what? Experience is tough to beat experience for anything. Yeah. You know, like, I, 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 you're like you're like what I tell other comedians when they go on a talk show, be prepared. And you're prepared. You know, you did your homework and that's what makes a good interview, I think. Thank you. Like you're like you're really amazing. Like what you do, Kevin. Like I love your work so much. Like you're awesome. Oh, thanks, Joe. That makes me feel good. Thank you. Kevin, is there anything you would like to promote? Shout like I'll link down below in the video description and then help you out. Uh to promote? Yes. Um, well, my book, it's called I Exaggerate My Brushes with Fame. It's available now wherever fantastic books are sold. Uh, it's also on Audible Books, so you can uh, listen to it there. And they have the paintings on, a, uh, they're called a um, um, P something, P, PFC or something. I don't know <laughs> what it's called. But anyway, you can also see the, uh, the paintings. So I have that. And then, of course, Hiking with Kevin is on YouTube. Uh, I usually air a new one every Thursday. It's about a 15 minute um commitment to sit down and watch that and they're usually a lot of fun they're always fun um and i do stand up there people can check out my my website comedy uh .com, and they can see my touring schedule for uh for my uh stand ups and um and i'm doing a lot of cities this year so um, i might be close to whoever it is yeah city near you never know people right you never know would you also like me to link down your social medias so yeah, yeah, my social media um, uh, for my artwork, it's uh, at Kevin Nealon Artwork. And for me, it's at Kevin Nealon. And my Twitter is uh, Kevin underscore Nealon. And um, I think on TikTok, it's just Kevin Nealon. Perfect. I'll say follow you here and then the links to each of your social medias and then subscribe to you on YouTube, the link, your book. Buy his book here. Link. You're the best. You're the best. Thank you. Well, thank you and Kevin for being an awesome, amazing guest. I had a fun and awesome time chatting with you. Thank you. My pleasure, man. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Kevin. Thanks, buddy. See ya.